What's up guys, this is going to be a crash course video on how to use the uh, SDK to create a bare minimum map with absolutely nothing in it. Um, it's basically just what you need to get from Unity into the engine and get it playing on a server and a client and connecting them up. So the first thing you need to do is install Unity. Um, you're going to need Unity 5.3.2 patch 4. Um, the link will be somewhere around the description of this video. Um, so we're assuming you've already gone through that installation process and we'll go on from there. Um, so the second thing you need to do is go into the tools section of your Steam library and find Hurt World Map Editor SDK. Double click on it and install it and download it. Um, that will give you all the files you need to load up Unity. Um, at the time of recording this, the launch options for that don't work um, due to a limitation of Steam. So to open the files, you'll need to go directly through Unity. Um, Alright, so first thing we're going to do is grab the path that Steam has installed the SDK to. So you can do that by going to Properties, Local Files, Browse Local Files. Um, just grab the path out of your address bar and then fire up Unity. Now once Unity's open, let's click open a new project. Um, chuck the path in your address bar, press enter, select the Unity project. Um, that'll kick off Unity doing an import of all the assets. Uh, mine's running off a cache server so it'll be significantly faster. Um, this may take on your machine up to 10 minutes, but this will only happen the first time you load it up. Okay, so first thing you'll see is an empty scene. Um, down the bottom left, I'm fairly sure this is a default layout for Unity, so down the bottom left you have all the files within the project. Um, first thing you want to do is open up the um, one of the example scenes and have a play around. Um, familiarize yourself with the UI of Unity. Um, there's plenty of tutorials on the internet on how to use Unity. Um, but the basic structure we've got here is um, a level equates to a scene. So a scene looks like this in your Project Explorer. Um, and the basic anatomy of a map it's pretty simple um, for what we're creating today. Um, we're just going to try to create a basic ground so you don't fall through the world, a spawn point for the player, and put a biome manager into the world so that you don't, um, well, so that the server can determine what your temperature should be. Um, and that's basically the minimum requirements for a map to load into the engine. So to start off, we're going to duplicate this template directory. So this is a bare minimum project or a bare minimum scene um, that will save you setting up the biome manager and the root of the level. Um, but you don't want to edit this because if we modify it in the SDK, Steam will overwrite your work. If you create new files, Steam shouldn't touch them even though they're in the Steam install folder. Um, so if you select the template folder and press Control D, it'll create a duplicate. Um, next thing you want to do is rename that to whatever your map's going to be called. In this case, let's call it Test Map. And let's also rename our scene to Test Map. And double click it to load it up. Um, so this will look exactly the same as our template. So there's nothing in the level right now. All we've got is level objects and the biome manager. Biome manager is currently configured to have starting desert biome across the entire map, um, which we'll do for our purposes today. Um, and level objects is the root of everything that we will create. So anything that you put into your level needs to be a child of this object. Um, this object defines things like the the size of your map. This probably won't affect you too much, so let's just sk skip it for now. 
Um, so the first thing we want to do is just create a blank terrain uh, for the player to run around on. To do that, we go to game object, 3D object, um, and we want to create a terrain and that will plonk it down in the world at zero, zero. Um, for the sake of neatness, let's move, let's make it so that zero, zero is in, in the middle of our terrain. Um, and our terrain has defaulted to size 500. So let's move it to negative 250 on the x-axis, negative 250 on the y on the z-axis. Um, leave it at zero for the y-axis. We don't want to move it up or down. Um, all right. So let's chuck a quick texture in there. So if you select the terrain, you'll see the inspector over here for all the different things that you can modify about it. Um, all we're going to do today is put a texture in and maybe chuck a bit of height bumpiness in it. Um, so to create a texture, you want to click on this paint tab, go to edit texture, add texture. Um, you'll notice that all the textures we use to create Demon's Land is already in this project, so you have access to all of them. Um, for, the, for this case, I think brown ripple sand looks the best on its own. So that's the um, albedo channel, but we'll also add a normal map, which gives it slight bumpiness. Um, if we just type in the sand, we'll see the normal map. Normal maps always look purpley like this. And click add, and you'll see our terrain now gains some color. Next thing we want to do is give ourselves a spawn point so the player knows where to spawn. Uh, if you go to the project view and type spawn to search for it, uh, we've got a pre-made prefab of player spawn point. So if you just drag that into the world somewhere, that's where you will appear when you first spawn. Um, quick tip, if you notice that things are clipping from the camera like this, um, finding a small object and double hitting F should fix that. Um, Okay. Um, these other things that come with player spawn point are the built-in no build zone. So we have a protection to say that uh, you shouldn't be able to encapsulate people's spawns and make them into a prison. So um, they're not absolutely necessary. The only thing that's actually necessary is this player spawn point script on any game object. All right. Um, so the next step, let's just move our terrain into our level objects because everything needs to be a child of level objects. Uh, we also need to move terrain onto the terrain layer, uh, which you can select over on the right inspector. Um, that will tell our spawner that it's a valid place to spawn objects on. Okay, so we've got our spawn point. We've got some terrain to run around on. Let's just give it a bit of height. So if we go to the raise lower terrain tab in the terrain settings, um, increase our brush size a bit and just paint around, make some hills. Beautiful. All these tools are built into Unity, so if you want to learn how to use them, there's plenty of tutorials that are Unity specific. Okay. So beyond beyond that, there's nothing else we need to actually get this running into the engine. This won't spawn anything. Um, the biomes won't change as you move. There won't be any creatures. Um, there's no nav mesh but it will let you load it into the engine as just a test, which is the point of this, to keep it short and sweet. Um, okay, so the way to build this into an actual map, once we've got to this point, we'll save our map, Control S. Uh, we'll go to Assets and Build Level Windows Only. Um, eventually you'll have to build it for all platforms but for the sake of this we're just testing so let's do it in windows because there's not much in the map this will be pretty quick um, if we were to build demon's land this would 
take uh, maybe five to ten minutes. open up where the SDK was installed by Steam and open up the Unity project folder. Um, you'll see that we've created a maps directory um, here while we're building. So this is where it places all the files um, that it's, we're going to output from the SDK. Um, when that's finished we should see this turn into a map. Okay, there we go. So the files that you'll see generated, some of these aren't needed by you. Um, we can't avoid having to generate them just for our, the way that we integrate maps into the engine. The only thing you care about at this point is the your map name dot uh, win sixty four dot map. Okay. Now before you can actually test this, you need to put both your client and your server of Hurt World into dev test mode. Um, at least at this current point in the future this build will be public and you won't, um, but that won't be for a couple of weeks yet. Um, so to do that you need to open up Steam um, and right click on, you need to do this for both your server and your client, go to properties um, click on betas and you'll see a drop down list um, where you can opt into a current beta branch and you want to be in dev test currently. Um, when you select that and click close it will download a entirely new version of the game um, which will have a different structure in it. Um, the, the difference between it is that it's completely restructured to be able to download um, or to be able to load maps into the engine which was pre-built into it before. Um, so once you've done that um, your structure of your game directory where it's installed into Steam um, if you open up your data folder um, you'll see a maps folder and this is where you want to put your new test map. So if we open up where we built our test map from, copy it across to the game client, um, that will that's everything that we need for this client to be able to connect to a server running test map um, on Windows. Um, and we need to do the same thing for our dedicated server. So if we browse to the local files of our server, find our maps folder, paste our map in there as well. Um, both should be ready to run. So now we want to host a local server using the dedicated server on my machine um, as the game, the client um, won't be able to host in future versions. Um, if we go to edit this host.bat script that comes when you download the uh, dedicated server, you'll see a command line looking like this. Um, actually, it probably comes down in this form. So after the 12871, you need to put space and then the name of your new map. So in our case, it's test map. So that just says we want to, when this script is run, to start up a server with name unconfigured on port 12871 on the map test map. If you don't supply the map it'll automatically load demons land. All right, so we want to save that, close it and run it. Um, now because it's a headless server it won't give you feedback 
um, as to whether it's working or not. If it closes instantly, something's going wrong. Um, but the best way to figure out what it's doing is to have a look at gamelog.txt. Uh, open that up. Alright, so the initialization stuff comes from Unity. The stuff that you care about is after this host command. So it's successfully connected to Steam. Um, it can't find a nav mesh, which is fine because we haven't supplied one. It looks for one on the file system. If you've just generated it, it doesn't find that either. Um, that warning is all fine. It doesn't find a save game. So it should be up and running and available to connect. Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually launch the client, which we will do through Steam. Now this server likely won't show up in our server browser um, unless you've forwarded the port to your machine and opened up your firewall. But the easiest way to connect to a server running on your machine, if it's running on the default port, is press F1 to open the console and type connect localhost. Um, so you'll see here that we pick up test map. Um, if we didn't have it, it would have kicked us and said you need a map. And uh, here we are. And I'll stop that one there. Um, there'll be much more detailed stuff in the following video, so check them out. Peace.